hey there, I'm Meteor, and I'm hoping you're having a marvelous day. But, sorry, I said but. Uh, before we get into the video, I'm going to firstly mention some other things. Like, number one, I changed my Sona. Um, I might change my profile picture to match it, or just might be a random art piece of mine. But I have like only four PNGs of this one, and I I'm going to work on more PNGs for it at some point. Trust, trust me. And, <laughs> and the second one is going to be a mass amount of trigger warnings because this is a Danganronpa character redesign for an AU that I'm writing a fanfic of, and I rewrote some of the story. And I will just say that there are a lot of, uh, this is like a more realistic setting of Danganronpa. And it's being turned into an AU, and I'm making redesigns for the fanfic that I've created. Like, obviously I won't upload the actual images to AO3, but the redesigns are there. Because, just for a little silly fun, if I ever want to upload art of it, and I will make this another video discussing character stories once I figure them all out. And these are all the character stories I have figured out, like, as of current. But before anything, I would like to say intense trigger warning. Not intense, but like, still trigger warning. I think this would be counted as intense trigger warning. I don't know. But just a trigger warning. Because there are mentions of a suicide attempt self-harm in one of the designs and abuse because at Hope's Peak Academy um, you'd get abuse basically so here's the summary I have wait I also forgot slight implications of essay like very slight um I will say that a lot of things that were not okay about Daniel Rafa before are rewritten to be more normal and basically this AU is called Hope from Despair and it's um, basically the aftermath of Hope Speak Academy because in this universe Hope Speak Academy is a K-12 dormitory school for the quote-unquote gifted but except the people with gifts were punished if they ever did it like the hope's peak academy was not to help train children with their talent but to remove it entirely and every time a child would do something that's talent related they'd be punished in certain ways the people who were executed in the canon games um they were tortured mercilessly which causes some everlasting, uh, everlast everlasting scars, either mentally or physically. Uh, the people who were murdered were punished, not as much as the kids who were tortured, but they were punished. And the people who survived are, well, people who sucked up to the school and survived its abuse. Well, technically not survived, because there have been some, like, being scolded or, like, smacked or beaten but still in some form of way they're the ones who sucked up and avoided it the most still traumatizing but um uh basically it takes place after v3 the characters that were in v3 had enough of this and reported the school all of them as a collective group and it causes Host Pick Academy to be closed for good. Which leaves the kids that were still attending, aka the Despair Girl characters, uh, to be sent home or sent to CPS care. And they, this is where the fanfic actually starts. Uh, they cannot reach the parents of Kamaru Nayegi, so they contact her older brother. And her older brother, uh, and her older brother, and her older brother happily takes her in, and his wife, Kyoko, uh, 
doesn't really mind her being there and actually enjoys her company. So, yeah, that's fun. Very epic. Not the abuse part, though, but the fact that I'm able to write this fanfic and upload it onto AO3. I will have the link in the description if you want to read it. Um, I will be making more chapters, but only one chapter is up right now. And I will end up making more chapters one day. Uh, I'm in the process of writing chapter two, actually. Where other characters are being introduced. And not just, like, four characters with the slight mention of one extra. Um, but, I, uh, sorry, I'm, like, spacing out a lot, and if you guys enjoy this, I will make more. I'm going to make more regardless, just like with my series, The Elevens, I'm going to make more of this regardless. Y'all don't get it twice, unless there is something specific you would want me to do and I find it very interesting, or if I want to just do stuff you guys recommend, then yeah, I'll do it. But a vast majority of my content is going to be this AU and uh, my series, The Elevens, because both of them, bo writing both of this, these things has brought me so much joy, and it's a lot. So, let me stop using these four same PNGs now, and let's get into the redesign. If I wore fake nails, the gloves wouldn't fit properly. Then that's that. The dead body doesn't belong to Kyoko, which should have been obvious since she's standing right here. Okay, so with Kyoko, there's not much there to discuss. Um, I did make it that she, after Makoto finishes his studies, she wanted to become either a lawyer or detective, but she couldn't decide, and Makoto being very supportive as he would be decided to be like hey i have the money i you can just do both i don't mind it even though she wants to pay him back and he has to keep saying we're we're fucking married you don't have to do this so but they haven't really been married for long as of current and they've been dating since before the graduation their graduation, that is, and I don't know what to explain their dynamic is, because Makoto in this universe is a lawyer, lawyer boy, okay, so I feel like she'd, like, calm him down, but for the overall design of her, she's supposed to be a detective, I, <laughs> I don't know, I struggled with finding a hairstyle for her as you can see and at some point I just decided to um, have it be short because I wasn't going to give her long hair just for her to kind of always have it up because I was gonna make her have it up or like short I didn't show like having it up but I did put it in my Pinterest board that she was gonna have her hair up because I felt like that would fit but I didn't feel like that made sense to me it didn't make sense so i just gave her short hair because one of the things that's like counted as a quote-unquote punishment for the girls at hope's peak academy is that they will get their hair cut off so that's why she had short hair and she ended up liking it so she kept doing it so that's what her hair is and why it's short because I'm making it that it's like something that was supposed to be bad in the beginning, but yeah, she started to like it. She started doing it. I gave her a little, wait, the coloring part isn't there. I'm sorry, I do the, I add in the video first before I do like the voiceover so I can do it accurately as like the video is going on because I'm editing on CapCut so I can see um, what I'm doing or what's happening at the moment. Um, which is why I'm struggling. I'm struggling so hard because I don't know what to say that's like there at the moment. So, but yeah, she's supposed to be dressed all fancy like a detective, lawyer lady or something. I don't know. But here's one thing that just proves that I skipped past the story in Dagan Rafa because I did not know that she had scars on her hand. 
so I like I have to have my friend who actually paid attention to the story tell me and so I don't add that into like the end of this speed paint actually so you don't get to see that other than until like the end and even the final picture doesn't have a save yet but anyways now to the part I tried to explain earlier I gave her a white piece in her hair because I felt like it would fit because I felt like she would dye it on purpose because she wanted to because she was bored one day I don't know I just felt a little silly guy I just felt a little silly um I actually didn't know what to do here like I I don't know what to say here I was for a while, I was trying to find the straight ally flag. <sighs> Sorry, I wasn't trying to, say, I was trying to say flag, but I can't remember letters sometimes. And, um, he, because she supports her bisexual husband, y'all. Um, somewhere near here, I'm supposed to be adding the scar on her hand. I don't know when, but, um, I, there. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this design and let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Mastermind behind the tragedy itself. And she has huge boobs. Big boobs too? Okay, so I gotta speed through this because I made this one hella short. Um, so when I was designing her, I didn't really want to give her, I wanted to give her a bow, but I felt like it didn't really fit. So I removed it. Um, I gave her a hoodie and jeans and just normal shoes because I feel like she wouldn't know exactly what fits her yet. So, cause like currently in the fiction, she doesn't know what stands out to her. She doesn't really have a style or anything yet. Um, I didn't give her any sexualities because I feel like she doesn't know what she is exactly because she hasn't really had an interest in anyone yet. And, um, the only person that she's friends with from Hope Speak Academy is Kotoko. I mean, she knows some of the other people, but no, she's only talking to uh, Kotoko. Kotoko. <sighs> Sorry, I can't pronounce things. I'm speaking fast. Anyways, that's the redesign. Okay, so trigger warning, because this discusses um, weird topics. Um, but how Kotoko knows Kamaru is that Kotoko did something and was about to be punished by the weird, creepy adults of Hope's Peak. But then Kamaru went, no, that's, that's not really okay. And just swooped in and kind of stopped that. But then the punishments changed and Kamaru was beaten very badly. And Kyoko, I mean, Kotoko was forced to watch just to show what happens if she quote unquote makes people step out of line for her. But, um, they're pretty good friends despite all of that. I know they, like, from what I've seen of clips, because I haven't played through the full game, they're not really on good terms at all, but I decided to change. This is an AU where things are like more realistic and they're not really hated each other. They don't hate each other. They have this mutual same hate. But um I honestly didn't know what to do for her. I I tried to give her more of a child um design and one thing she's she, she's being fostered by Chiaki and Ibuki cuz they're canonically dating those two Chiaki and Ibuki, they're canonically, canonically dating in this universe, and uh, Kotoko is their canon foster child that they will later adopt. Uh, I didn't give her a sexuality because, again, I feel like she wouldn't really have one because minor, but uh, I hope you enjoyed the design. Um, I don't really know what else to add here. Um, so I'm just gonna say, uh, once again, I'll be putting the fanfic link in the description. 
and I am currently working on chapter two as we speak because I, I write pretty fast if it's something I enjoy doing and I enjoy writing this fanfic and I hope everyone else enjoys it once I start making more of it because right now it's only one chapter on AO3 so um, I hope you enjoyed the redesigns and if you have any critiques or have any questions about any of this then please let me know in the comments below um, yeah uh, I hope you have a marvelous day and don't stray too far into the galaxy <laughs>